Hi, welcome back. I'm Chris. I'm Christy. This is the Chris and Christy channel. And uh, today we're going to be talking about um, the best platform to choose if, like, let's say you're in a survivalist group or either in a, a militia type group and you're trying to choose between um, what kind of platform you're wanting to use. Uh, we're going to look at several different options. Uh, the first one being the AR-15 platform, being the most popular, and uh, really what they call the uh, tinker toys of the of the firearm industry. Uh, it's called that because it's so versatile, and you can do anything you want with uh, an AR-15. Um, one that we're going to be talking about first uh, is my primary one. Uh, this one is a car, a carbine length. Um, now era 15s come in a couple of different variety types. Uh, one being, uh, if it's a 10 inch barrel or below, it's considered a pistol AR. Um, up from that is what's called a carbine length, which is this one. And th these are usually 16 inch barrels. Um, and then up from that is called a mid, a mid length, which I have one of those, which I'm, I'm also going to show to you. And then up from that is the 20 inch and hard stock, uh, A2, A3, or A4 style, uh, rifle model. And the reason why I say that these are so easily transformed is because... If you have a quad rail on here, uh, I believe this one is a Knight's Armament uh, quad. And with these, you can do just about anything. Uh, you can mount, if you want a, for, a foregrip on it, you can mount that. Uh, it's very easy. You just use a, screw, a screwdriver and uh, loosen the um, uh, screws. And you can just slide it off and on. And you can put it to wherever you want it at. I mean, whatever is most com most comfortable and most available for you. Um, this one has a fixed uh, sight. It's not a free-floating barrel. Uh, so it's got a fixed sight. A, uh, what's called an A2 style sight. And on the side here, I have a, fl a, fla a flashlight mounted to mine on the side. You can mount whatever you want. You can mount a, fl a flashlight, a grip, a, la a laser, you know, whatever you want to mount to it, really. It's all up to you. Um, as you can see, the flashlight, you know. Um, now, on top is a little bit different. Now, let's say this was a free-floating uh, barrel. You can... Like, let's say it didn't have this on the front of it. The free float means that there's no sight on it. In that case, you would have to get what's called flip-up sights, iron sights. And you would have to put one here on the front end and one on the back end. And you can push a button and, ma and make them fli uh, flip up. I actually have my M-Bus sights on my 22 version of this and this has a red dot or green dot up here uh, it's sighted in fixed uh, this one actually comes off pretty easy this one is just you move this upwards and it, com it comes off very easily now the reason why I say it's, it's like the tinker toys is because this here is an iron sight but it's also a carry handle. So, let's say you wanted to use this with the iron side on it. You know what? Get this. Find your spot where you want to put it. And simply tighten up the two screws on the side of it.
now you no longer have a red dot you now have iron sight and a carry handle attached to it so you can now go old school on it but I like having a red a red dot uh, but it, it, it would be very important to keep these handy I uh, keep to keep this in a pocket or a leg pocket or something just in case you need it in the field for whatever reason uh, if your your red dot batteries go dead or otherwise malfunctions then you can So if this malfunctions, you can, all, can always switch to iron sights. Um, and what's also good about these is it doesn't matter if you're uh, male or female. Don't matter how long your arms are or how short or how, how tall you might be. Your reach, you can extend it or you can close it in. So you can make it to whatever is more... more like more comfortable you can choose your your comfort uh, it also has a one point swing which I have attached to it uh, you can also attach a two point swing with this up here and of course down below you get the other part so you can attach a two a two point swing or Whatever the case might be that you want to go with. Um, it's a very easy to operate platform. Uh, releases mags very easily. And you can put them in just as easy as taking them out. Um, I've done a review before on the AR-15s. And... You know, their functionality, safety measures, all that. But uh, some and some do not. Most have what's called flash hiders or a, a muzzle brake it may have on it. Uh, so each one of the AR-15 platforms are different. Uh, there's also different rail systems that you can get uh, besides the Picatinny. Um, you can also get this over here, get the other one. Uh, this is a M-Lock system. Sorry. This is the M-Lock system right here. And this is a mid-length system. Uh, it is a free float barrel. So, like I said, if you wanted to do iron sights with this one, you probably can't use this. Or you could, but you'd have to sight it in with a, a flip-up iron sight for the front. Uh, on this one, it's more of a medium-range rifle. Again, it's got the same. You can extend the butt or shorten it, whichever. Uh, this one has a combination uh, it's a scope slash red dot, green dot, slash laser. So it's, all, it's also got a laser on it. Uh, this has not got the um, one point sling. It's got a two, a two point sling set up on it. Uh, which I've got like that on purpose. Because I actually built this one. This is one that I personally built. And how you know is that you have to um, mill out the receivers completely. Uh, they come to you as 80% lowers. You have to make it 100% lower. Um, I'll show you what I mean here. Sorry. Now, 
if you look real close, pull it up the dust cover here. Okay, if you look real close, you can tell there are no serial numbers, but this is completely legal. You're allowed to build your own firearm, but it is only for you to keep, which means you make it, it's glued to you for the rest of your natural born life. It is only for you. You cannot sell it. Under no circumstances can you sell it. You can... It's kind of called a ghost gun. Yes, it's what they Very like to ghost. call a ghost gun. But you cannot sell this. We, we will never sell this gun. Yeah. Because it is attached to us. Yeah, I mean, I personally built it. I mean, I bought the parts, put it together, the lower the... parts kit... The reason why they got away with it is because of the, I think, lower, the receiver part. I don't know, like, what it's part not is cons not considered a gun. Yeah, the lower receiver is considered the firearm, as far as the Bureau of, a of ATF is concerned. This is the gun, right here, is this little uh, polymer lower is considered the gun. They don't yeah. consider this the gun, they don't consider the barrel, the upper... The uh, buffer so, tube. So, like, if you look online, I, I can't really remember the website, so don't quote me on this, but they will, like, send you, like, the parts for, to make the gun. Yeah. You can buy all works. the parts to make these. Uh, most people either go through Brownells, or you can go through Aero Precision, which, that's what I went through to make this upper was Aero Precision. Uh, they sell really good, good, good products. Uh, the other one I put together was through. I actually put together quite, quite a few a ARs. Um, all you really need is a drill, right? Yeah, all you really need is a drill press, or if you get a, a kit, you can even use a dr a Dremel tool if you're doing polymer. If you're doing a Aluminum lowers, I would say have a drill press, and you're you're really going to have to use a, um, I can't remember what it's called, but you pretty much move it from side to side, front to front, I mean front to back, side, and side to side, and you use that when you're doing the milling process. Uh, you have to be really careful uh, when you're doing the aluminum ones, because if you screw up, then you're out of a little bit of money. You gotta start yeah. all over again. So I'd suggest, like, really, really, like, studying, like, with videos and stuff, and, like... I got lucky enough to where I've never messed up, so... So... And, I mean, these um, guns shoot terrific. I mean, smooth. I've never had a problem with them. I've never had a misfire. Uh, especially with aero precision. They're terrific uppers. Uh, just... Really, really nice. Um, but yeah, I put this one and the other one together. Yeah, after you're done talking about the gun, I got something to say. Okay. But yeah, I mean, uh, if, if you're considering a rifle for potential militia use, if you're part of a group or thinking about joining, if you want something that you can configure, make it your own, and trick it out, as much as you want to, or as less as you want to. I mean, you can go old-fashioned. Leave it with just its normal A A2 sight. Put a carry handle on it. And leave the normal uh, grips on it. You can do that. Not, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it looks perfect. It's going to function normal. And the military has relied upon those no normal-looking firearms. Ever since the AR has been in service, or the military version M16 uh, has been in service. No, these are for like crafty survivalists. Yeah, I mean, if you're craft. crafty and you like to spend time and build your own guns, then yeah, the AR-15 is perfect for you. But if you're lazy like me and don't want to build anything, <laughs> I'd suggest just buying one. Yeah, I mean, right now, you probably would be lucky to find an AR for 
under fifteen hundred, even a cheapy one, because these things are selling like hotcakes. Um, one thing I will tell you is, if you don't have a lot of magazines for these things, now is your time to get them while they're still cheap. Yeah. Because you think guns and ammunition is the big thing. Next, I foresee these being the next hot ticket, you know, $40, $50 a piece item is these magazines. I don't think really, because they're like... I mean, they're like 10 bucks right now. You can buy these now off P uh, PSA and a lot of different companies. You can still get these for about sometimes eight ninety nine, ten ninety nine. 10 99 Yeah. Buy them up. Buy boxes of them. If you can, if your abil ability allows you to do so, buy a whole bunch of these. Because if there's ever a ban and there's a grandfather clause, these things will be worth not ten dollars, probably close to a hundred bucks. May may uh, could be more than that. Um, I mean, if they are lu lucky enough to get any legislation through. Is they they would have to have a grandfather clause because there's too many gun owners out there, dem, dem, like Democrat, Repub and Republican alike. There's a lot of new gun owners to the Second Amendment community, a lot of which are Democrats who's never owned a gun a day in their life, and now they're buying up guns and they're buying a ammo at jacked up prices. So, yeah. This is your best platform for a, if you're getting a gun for being in a group. If you're just wanting to be a, a rifleman, then that's your best, best option, I can tell you. Um, you can al also go with any other ones. I mean, you can get a PTR-91 if you like HK clones. Or you can get uh, AK-47 maybe. Uh, AK-74, uh, if you don't mind the whole, um, they're trying to look like our two, two, three, five, five, six rounds. AR-14s are pretty good, I think. AR-15. AR, there's an AR-14 too. No, there's something called an M-14, or oh. Mini-14, that's two separate guns too. That's a choice as well you can make if you wanted a two, 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 three. Okay. You can get a Mini-14... You can trick it out, making it look like an ARC-56. Uh, which, if you don't know what that is, it's a uh, wood furniture with like a black grip. And it's got like a silver aluminum uh, un underfolding um, stock. And that's, that's one option for you. Uh, or you can get an M14. Old school Vietnam War type era. M14 for a standard battle rifle. You know, I don't think anybody would look down on you. In fact, they're very accurate. They're 308s. Um, most mags they take is 20 round. I'm sure they make more than that. Well, less, but I think 20 is the standard round for those rifles. Those have a little bit more of a farther reach than your AR-15. If you're playing, if if you're a good shoot, a good shooter, and you're planning on being like a sniper, or marksman, whatever you want to call yourself, um, I would probably look at an M14 rifle. Either that, or uh, the Viet Cong during the Vietnam War and the North Vietnamese Army, the N NVA, they used the SKS with a scope mounted to it, you know, and got just as good shots off uh, with their snipe. Their snipers, as our guys with M M14s were doing. Um, also, for sharpshooters, you may want to think about getting a bolt action rifle. Uh, getting something like a 1903 Springfield 8mm Mauser K98, uh, 9130, most in the gun. Um, a Remington uh, set. 700 and neither a 308 or a 30 out 6 um, a Winchester 
Model 70 would, would be a good choice. Um, but really, as far as a good rifleman platform, I'd have to stick with the AR-15. I mean, it's, it's a nice platform. You can do anything you want to do with it. Um, but if you do choose that, one good investment you want to do is get one of these, or maybe a couple of them. You know, it depends on if you're well, they just need one. designated rifleman. But this is a bandolier. Okay, uh, it's in the old ACU pattern. Um, this can hold six sta uh, standard capacity 30 round mags. Okay. It'll hold six of them. Gee, these things are so hard to get off. Yeah. I think some of these are old pre band mags. I think. I think some or one should say for US government use only or some crap like that. No, they don't really, to be honest. Might be in my other one, but... It just says, um... Let me see. Well, hang on. Oh, I'm trying to read it. Because I've taken it out of my hand. <laughs> uh, one thing you'll say... notice, too, with Aero Mags is they come with different colored followers. Uh, there's... Some are supposed to be better than, uh, than others. Uh, orange, I think, is the cheapest you can get. And cheap is best. Uh, this one is black. Sometimes. That's black. Uh, black. Very rattly sounding. <laughs> uh, this is one I personally upgraded, which I'll do a video on that as well. How to up upgrade your magazines. Um... And you do that? what you can do is, you take out the floor plate right here. You take off that floor that floor plate, and the spring will come out. And so with this, and I put Magpul followers in most of my magazines. But yeah, this is one that's got a Magpul follower in it. And that's a, something you can do yourself that really makes these a lot better. It's, it's something you can do on your own. It's easy to do. You know, I'll make a video of how to do it. Um, but if you're in the field, your uh, normal combat loadout is usually seven magazines. That's the old school... School of thought is to carry seven mags total, one in your in your rifle and six spare ones. Now, some Marines and uh, in, in, in infantry would opt to carry extra mags on their Alice packs. They would take the uh, GI uh, three mag ammo uh, contain, uh, containers. Alice clip them to the back of their Al their Alice packs and carry like three to nine extra mags. Um, so you know that's that's a choice. And then they came up with this being a better idea because with this, it's more easily accessible than ha than having to take your pack off and get to your mags. With this, you can just sling it over you. Wear it like this, and you've got it handy to reload. Uh, these do also have uh, buttons on them, and you can actually attach these to uh, some some rigs. You can attach these to some, not all. Uh, but these are very handy. They come in woodland camo, ACU, OCP, um, or multi-cam. But yeah, this is 
a good choice if you're going to be a, a, a rifleman. You can also get what's called a, a, a rifleman setup in ACU pattern, fair, fairly cheap. You get a, a Molly 2 backpack, you get the straps for it, you get a assault pack, which is separate from it. Uh, you get one of these. You get the uh, ACU Molly Vest system. You get grenade pouches. You get AR mag pouches. You get a waist belt um, or a fanny pack, I like to call it. And you get um, two canteens, canteen holders. And I believe, I believe that's about it. I think you get like X amount of pouches, but they give you quite a lot. And you can get it for like, I think three, four hundred dollars maybe. Last time I looked. Way more than what they should be. But that's uh, my take on this. And uh, if you have any questions, comments. Um, please feel free to do so. Um, definitely like and subscribe and share. And, you know, we're not, pick, not picking on nobody, but, you know, we try to keep our channel fa family friendly. So, we don't like any, you know, negative com like, ne any negative comments. Oh, wow, you read my mind. I was actually going to say something about that. Yeah. I mean, oh. there's enough negativity in this whole universe, you know, there, there doesn't have to be negativity. You know, we're all supposed to be, you know, searching for answers, looking for not uh, for knowledge. Hey, let me say something That's what second. Facebook's all about. But, um, any negative comments will actually be deleted and... Yeah, she's we the producer, so... We don't want any of that stuff on our channel. We're survivalists, and we take this very, very seriously. And if you don't want... If you don't want to um, take our advice or anything, then leave the channel. If you like what we have to say and agree, then stay on our channel, but... You know, I 100% agree. And, you know... I want to do a shout a, sh a shout a shout out to all of our uh, subscribers out there. You know, thank th thank you, and also yeah, thanks for your prayers for her them. because yeah. she was sick and not feeling too well. And you know that really means a lot uh, coming from you guys. Yeah, we like all of our positive subscribers. We love you all, and um, but yeah, we just we just wanted to. Um, let you know that the negativity affects us. I know it's YouTube and it's expected, but um, you know, it does we want to try to keep. Bother us, make us sad sometimes. That, that's well, I mean. not me. I mean, I don't really care. <laughs> no, I, I mean, do. I care. I mean, she's a little, a little bit more on that, but you know, we know people are gonna like what what they're gonna like, and they're gonna dislike what they're gonna dislike, and they're gonna find faults in in everybody. You know, we just don't pay any attention to them, you know, because it's just ignorance, pretty much. But I yeah, mean, we if do people want to, you know, take shots at me and, you know, question my back, my background, you know, some people want to share their backgrounds and some people choose not to. I choose to share what I want the public to know, which is what most people on on YouTube do. They only tell people what they want to tell. I mean... But yeah, he is a real licensed EMT. Um, none of us do have military backgrounds, but he somewhat has military background ROTC. Yeah, I was in a little bit. college ROTC. And even before that, high school... JRTC. I mean, I know that doesn't count, but I was also in uh, Silver Air Patrol um, when I was growing up. So just to clear the air, you know, we really do have experience. And I've worked in uh, 
private security, you know, let's just not talking too much about that, but, you know, I've done, you know, pri uh, some private security contracting. But other than that, yes, no uh, actual military, U.S. Army, Navy, Marines, anything like that. But I have no experience in any of this stuff. But I've been around this my whole life. I've been around weapons. I've been around military my whole life. Um, so, yeah, I mean... Uh, if you have any questions at all, any, you know, positive com uh, comments, um, you know, please feel free to ask. And, uh, someone brought, uh, brought up something about, uh, loading the magazines and stuff. Uh, I've cut myself many times on those, uh, aluminum mags. You know, because sometimes when you're loading them up, you know, the aluminum is going to cut your fingers. Me so, I was just trying to protect uh, protect her from getting hurt and, you know, something like that. So, I usually have her use the, um, she, she tends to like the uh, polymer mags. You know, the hard, pla the hard plastic ones. Uh, like your, uh. Uh, what are they called? Uh, P mags, stuff like that. So, you know, uh, but she does enjoy doing all, all the stuff I do, you know, loading the weapons and le learning how to load, un unload them, uh, gun safety and such. Um, yeah, I just kind of have a, have a problem with, you know, just wanting to do something someone else does. And just trying, trying it out, trying to be <laughs> productive, but in the end, you know, he's trying to protect me from doing, like, cutting myself or doing something silly. Um, and I know if the crap hits the fan that, you know, that's one thing that, you know, I've advised her and talked and, and, talk, and talked about is once that does happen... Once the proverbial crap does hit the fan, then, you know, stuff's going to happen. You're going to get hurt, you know, stuff. It's it's just going to be a chaotic situation. Um, I've had some people, you know, ask questions like, you know, why does a civilian need all this armament and, and stuff like that? It's like, well, I've got a lot of family members, friends who may not have a gun, and who could possibly be of help. So, you know, I'm able to help. I don't understand the militia movement, because the militia is the backbone of the United States as a whole. Without the militia, you wouldn't have had the United States of America as we know it today. You know, back, it started out with have, farmers with pitchforks. Back when we had like 13 colonies, back when America was like from Maine all the way down to South Carolina, because we didn't take Florida until later on. But, um. But yeah, just the 12 colonies is how it yeah, started the 12, out. Yeah, the 12 colonies. Yeah. Militias actually was the backbone. Of that movement, we'd be under English Parliament. Yeah. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be free. The Continental Army didn't even come about until after the militia had already started to gain control of the um, of the British. The Continental Army was was formed by you know George by George Washington, who later became our first U.S. president. <laughs> But it's important to know that still today the militia is the people. The people, the militia is classified by in, anyone between the ages of 17 to, I think in, in Ohio it says like six, 60 something, six, 65 or 69 even or something like that. I mean, 
people don't understand that militias were, you know, sometimes younger kids, they, they had other jobs. They were, uh, did horseshoeing. They ran shops. They were shopkeepers. I mean, they wasn't professional soldiers at all. They had other daily jobs to do. But they were called Minutemen. They were r ready at a minute's notice. Grab their musket, grab their powder, grab, grab their gear, and muster and be av available to protect their town, their county, or their state. And many people say, well, that's what the, na the, the National Guard is. No, it's not. The National Guard came about because of the 1903 Dick Act, which uh, was created by, I think he was a senator or a representative, but his, his last name was Dick. But it was created in, 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 in 1903, and it pretty much gave the U.S. government control over the National Guard. National Guard was the brainchild of Teddy Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt, um, who came up with the whole National Guard. Um, but the, Na the National Guard can be federalized, which is what makes it different from a militia. It can be federalized, which means the president can gain control of that National Guard unit and activate it for deployment. Okay, a militia only answers to the state and whoever that state com uh, commander of that militia happens to be. Um, a, mil a militia commander, CO, is chosen by a, a democratic process. You know, he's chosen. And then he, in turn, chooses an XO, which is the next in command. Depending on how big your group is, how big your militia is, depends upon, you know, what rank you're going to be. If you may have, let's say, a brigade, or more than, you know, 12, 1300 men, then you're going to need someone at, at the rank of Brigadier General. That's u usually been the highest that militias have been, has been a one-star general. And I think that's only with Michigan. Uh, Michigan's got a very, very large uh, private militia. Very large. Um, down from that would be a, cur a colonel, which is, that's going to be a regiment commander. Uh, that's going to be at least anywhere between 900 to 1,000. Down from that, you're going to have a, a battalion, maybe. Battalion can be anywhere between three to 500, but it, it really depends. A, a battalion can be as high as 800 and as little as three. But that's a lieutenant colonel who would control that, like that many troops. Um, down from that, a, ma a major, but they're basically a admin officer, more or less like an XO to a colonel, a lieutenant colonel. Um, ca a captain controls uh, a company size detachment, which can be anywhere between 80 to 150 men in a company. Sometimes they can be more than that. Um, I, I'm, I'm talking old militia. Uh, it's about 100 men in simple terms. Uh, down from that would be a lieutenant who would control a, pl a platoon. Platoon would be at least a strength of 50 men if not more or less. Uh, and as you go down from that, is your non-commissioned officer type roles. Um, down from a platoon level, 
you're going to run into what's called a squad. A squad is usually going to be 10 to 12 men. And your squad commander is going to be a senior sergeant. Is at least going to be a, a, sar a sergeant, staff sergeant, first sergeant. Uh, he's going to be some kind of a, a higher ranking sergeant. Uh, usually, in, anything over a staff sergeant is is usually a so staff the a staff the NCO. Militia, the more like of a rank you get, and like the less people yeah, you have, the smaller of a rank. The smaller. Yeah, and once you get to talking, you talk a lot. <laughs> yeah, as far them. as um, <laughs> below that, you have what's called a fire team, which a squad would no would normally have three fire teams, a four. Uh, four men. You got a four-man fire uh, fire team that's usually commanded by a specialist or corp a corporal is is usually in charge of a a fire team. And then below that is just your standard infantrymen or militiamen, if you want to call it that. And just a, a disclaimer: militias aren't scary at all. I mean, we don't just. Like, yeah, randomly, I mean, um, if anything, we so try well, to get uh, get involved with the community. If you're planning on starting a group, do so. You know, don't let anything stop you. You know, there's a lot of people out there who's, you know, in our group, we have lots of ex-military from Desert Storm, Panama, um... Even up to, uh, like, the war on terror. So, we have a, a lot of people in our group, uh, very, very talented, good backgrounds. We're not going to say our group's name. Yeah, I mean, for, um, OPSEC, we're not going to mention any group names or anything like that. Um, those of you who are in groups yourself... You understand what I mean by OPSEC. So, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, this has been a fun video. Um, but militias aren't bad or anything. Yeah, <laughs> regar regardless of what you hear from pe people, there's some people out there that might say, oh, you know, militia are just military wannabes. We just safely protect our country. And our state, secret. mainly. And our state. And protect our constitution, that's all we do. Yeah, I mean, that's what's important is, you know, if it gets down to it, if the military becomes, un, un, like, under fire, if there's an inv invasion, some people might say, oh, n nobody would ever invade America. But it is possible. Well, I'm sure Ad Adolf Hitler... Thought nobody would ever attack Fort, what he called Fortress Europe, but they did. They attacked at Normandy, at U Utah Sword, Juno, Omaha, Utah Beaches, and um, Point Du Hoc. They uh, assaulted with Canadian, Br uh, British, American, and French troops. Not to mention every air, airborne brigade, the eight, the eighty second, the hundred and first, all attacked Fortress Europe at Normandy. So if you think something like that can't happen here, sorely mistaken. There's a reason why the United States Marine Corps right now is doing away with tanks. If you don't believe me, look it up. They are now going towards more amphibious attacks than they are tanks and air power and cannons. They're downsizing that. They are amphibious more amphibious means. You can't amphibious means uh, water attack, attack by water by landing craft. Try not to use big words on the channel. Okay. You don't understand. But yeah, it's pretty much like an armored boat. If you want to call it that. It's an armored boat. Yeah. And it's full of troops. And it's got guns on it. And they assault beachheads. 
uh, similar to what happened in Grenada back in 1983 when they, um, when the Marines attacked Grenada. Um, it's not really been done since. Um, there's not that many places around with beachheads. But the po but the point is, you know, any place could be attacked at any moment. Yes. It's just, it doesn't matter, like, if we have a bad leader, a good leader. And if you um, get Russia, China, all these countries going against us at the same time, okay, they're going to weak, weaken our air, our air defenses first and sea defenses. And what surrounds the United States? If you go to California, what are you going to see? Beaches. Okay? Those beaches are not defended whatsoever. Los Angeles County lifeguards and police are not, not going to do squat. Okay? There's beaches that they, that, that they could easily land at. They could take Hawaii. They can uh, come up through the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, there's tons of ways. They could take control of Canada, come down from the north. They could come from the east coast, attack through uh, Florida. Florida's got beaches everywhere. Um, but I mean, don't just discount the fact that you know, that it can happen. But, we're, uh, in the, vi the video for now. Hope, hope it was informative. Yeah. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, please feel free to ask. Um, stay positive. Yeah. Because, you know, with ne negativity, nothing's gonna get done. We all need to stick, to stick together. We're all fight, fighting for the same cause. We all ad admire and keep and hold dear the Second Amendment. So we're all on the same side. We all want the same thing. You so know, let's stay on the same side. Negative Negativity is just not going to do anything good at all. Um, what was I going to say? It's here? useless. You can catch more flies with honey than you can with vinegar. I mean, I just, was gonna say just that. Something, but I forgot. Anyways, I don't care. I thought that, that that don't really matter. But you have a good, safe night. Yeah, and you guys have a great night, great tomorrow, depending on where you're at between Texas and Maine. Um, there's a, a bit of cold weather and snow, so stay safe. God bless you all. God bless America. Bye. Bye. <laughs>